Okay. Good morning, everybody, um, on this cold Monday morning. So let's get started. It seems as if most people are in. There are a few people joining. Let's wait a minute or two and just let the last ones join with us. Good morning. Um, I'm still here. Just another minute. Uh, there's still a few people joining us. Right. It seems everybody is in. Let's get started. Um, good morning. I'm Wendy Peplet, Chief Education Specialist for Languages. Just a few things before we start the, the webinar. Let's just cover the basics, although I think most of you are um, comfortable with it. If you are struggling to hear me, make sure your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will automatically be muted when joining the session. Should you have any questions, you can ask your question in the question box below or on your right or raise your hand. To raise your hand, click the icon on your dashboard below or on your right. Um, you can download this presentation in the handout box below or on your right. You will also find all this information in the question box below or on your right. Remember to send your questions. Attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, Irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in the attendee being dismissed from the session. If we did not get your question, please send an email to academics at mpoc.co.za. Questions in the question box will be answered after the session and made available afterwards. If you did not receive the questions and answers, please send an email to info at impoc.co.za. You can also visit IMPAC's website for the recordings of the session. The website address https www.impoc.co.za. COVID-19 online schooling as well as past class videos are available on IMPAC's website. Now let's have a look at what to expect during your June examinations that start on 1 July. These examinations you will be writing at your own time and memorandums will be sent to you so that you can um, mark them yourselves. They will not be marked by MPOC. In paper one, you can expect section A, which is a comprehension for 30 marks. Section B is your summary. Remember, home language have to answer the summary in paragraph form, not in point form, 10 marks. Section C, language in context. The language in context text will comprise of visual literacy as editing um, questions. Paper two, section A, poetry. You will have to study all the poems um, for terms one and two. You will receive four questions, four prescribed poem, poems, of which you have to answer two questions. That will count 20 marks, 10 marks each. Question five is an unseen poem for 10 marks. That is compulsory. Section B, your novel. Question six is contextual questions for 25 marks. Question seven, a literary essay for 25 marks. These are both compulsory. 
paper three. Section A is an essay for, for 50 marks. And section B, you have to write two transactional texts, each counting 25 marks. Study the following for paper two. The poems, sonnet 104, the follower, anthem for doomed youth, Sunstrike, Lament for a Dead Cow, The Wild Doves at Louis Trichard, Notes on Answering an Unseen Poem, Your Novel, The Great Gatsby, Study the entire novel as well as all your study notes in your study guide. You can have a look at the webinar I did about The Great Gatsby. If you study those notes, you should be able to answer any type of essay question. Now, we are carrying on with Term 3 work, as Term 3 is going to be very short, as um, two weeks of July will be taken up with your exams, and two weeks afterwards we will be um, <clears throat> giving time for lessons on your examinations to answer questions that you did not understand. So we'll be starting with Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. You will find it on page 70 in your study guide. While you are trying to page to this page, I just want to mention um, the webinar does, is not slow enough for you to take notes. But as I said in the beginning, you can download this presentation. So if you want to download it now, you are welcome. What is Dover Beach about? A summary of Dover Beach. The speaker of Dover Beach is with his partner on the coast of England. France and England are so close to each other that lights can be seen at, the, at night from some places. Standing at a window, the speaker looks out towards Calais in France. He sees the lights on the coast. The sea is quiet and calm. He calls his partner to look and listen to the sea. He then says that faith is fading from society like the tide from the shore. People no longer believe in God. He speaks directly to his partner, asking that they always be true to each other and to the world around them. He, however, warns that the world's beauty is only an illusion, as it is a difficult and troubled world. The structure of this poem. This poem is a lyric written in free verse. In other words, the meter and rhyme vary from line to line. Now, let's read the poem. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair. Upon the straits on the French coast, um, the Straits is the sea between England and France. Upon the Straits, on the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand. Glimmering and, and vast, out in the tranquil bay. Tranquil is another word for calm. Come to the window, sweet is the night air only from the long line of spray, where the sea meets the moon-blanched land. The moon-blanched land is made, uh, the land is made pale in the moon night. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. The strand is another word for beach. 
begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow um tremulous means it's trembling cadence with tremulous cadence slow these are trembling rhythm of the sea and bring the eternal note of sadness in eternal meaning everlasting stanza two sophocles long ago sophocles was a greek playwright in the earlier century heard it on the Aegean, and it brought the Aegean is a part of the mediterranean sea lying between greece and turkey and it brought into his mound, mind the turbid ebb and flow turbid means cloudy ebb and flow um, means back and forth in other words the flow tie flow flowing away the ebb tide and flow the flow tide flowing back in back and forth of human misery misery sadness we find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle filled filled girdle is a belt around your waist and fold rolled around but now i only hear its mel melancholy long withdrawing roar melancholy means sad retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges drear vast edges huge and drear lonely and naked shingles of the world shingles are the small beach stones ah love let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various so beautiful so new various mixed diverse hath really neither joy joy nor love nor light nor certitude certitude certainty security nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain and we are here as on a darkling plain darkling when it's becoming dark in other words nighttime swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight alarms warnings alarms warn you or it could be causing anxieties where ignorant armies clash by night now we will discuss each stanza stanza one the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair there we see the alliteration of the f the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits on the french coast the light let's look at lines one and one and two the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair the poem begins with a simple statement that the sea is calm the simple vocabulary and regular iambic meter makes the language feel calm too here you can see the iambic pentameter the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits line two the f sounds of full and fair contribute to the opening's relaxed feel tying in with the calmness of the sea now they could ask you in a question what is the effect of the alliteration of the the f sounds in line two or they could say 
identify the alliteration in line two and explain the effect of it. The F sounds of full and fair contribute to the opening's relaxed feel, tying in with the calmness of the C. The first three phrases all begin with the, followed by a noun, the sea, the tide, the moon, setting up a gentle rhythm that mimics the slow movement of the waves. The three L sounds in line one and two, calm, full, and lies, have a sleepiness to them also helping to establish the sense of night that is important to the poem. Likewise, the N sounds between to night, moon, and upon tell nothing of the speaker's eternal struggle that is to come. In other words, these three first three lines of stanza one all bring about a calmness. This is in part reflective of the speaker's initial state of mind as the speaker looks out and perceives beauty in a natural scene. And we carry on with lines three, four, five and six. Upon the straits on the French coast, the light gleams and is gone, the cliffs of England stand glimmering and fast out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Lines four and five, we see the alliteration of the GL sign. Sound gleams and glimmering. Lines three to five. Looking across the English Channel, the speaker sees the lights of the French coast fade away. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of the English coast stand tall and bright, and the bay seems calm, the tranquil bay. The GL sounds tie together conceptually with light. The softness of the sound evokes the way the light is fading, gleams glimmering. Line six, suddenly the speaker addresses somebody, come to the window, sweet is the night air, and urges the person to come and look at what the speaker is looking at and to enjoy the night sweet, pleasant, in other words, pleasant air. <clears throat> Sorry. Still stands a one, only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Line seven to eight, the speaker senses something is not quite right, only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land and describes the spray where the water meets the moonlit land where the sea meets the moon blanche land lines 9 to 11 the speaker tells the other person to listen listen to the sound grating roar listen you hear the grating roar of the pebbles as the waves shift them back and forth up the beach and down Lines 12 to 14, begin and cease, and then again begin with tremulous cadence, slow and bring. The speaker notes the slow repeating action and identifies it with eternal sadness. 
stanza two. Sophocles long ago heard it on the agent, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow. This is a metaphor, as it is being um, compared to the flow of waves and of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. Lines 15 to 16. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean. The speaker thinks about the ancient Greek playwright Sophocles and imagines Sophocles hearing the same sadness in the Aegean Sea as he now hears on the English coast. Line 16 to 18, heard it on the Aegean source, on the Aegean, and then specifically, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. Sophocles in the mind of the speaker compares the sad sound of the waves to the general sadness of humanity. That is your metaphor, which moves like the waves. Lines 18 to 20. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The speaker then notices another thought that comes with the sound of the sea. Stanza 3. The sea of faith was once too at full and round earth's shore, lay like the folds of a bright girdle, girdle filled, but now I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges and naked shingles of the world. Now, if we look at lines 21 to 23, we find a metaphor, we find alliteration of the F sound, full, folds, fold, and we find a simile, lay like, lay like. In other words, we see the sea lay like the folds. The speaker describes religious faith as the sea that once was full like the tide. This is where you find the metaphor. At that time, it reached around the earth like a girdle. There we find the simile. The F sound in faith, full, folds, and fold suggests the way the sea of faith used to be full, creating a sense of abundance and also comparing it to the way faith used to reach far around the world. Here the, you could be asked the question, identify the figures of speech or sound devices and sound devices found in lines 21 to 23. And you will, in this one sentence, be explaining all three. At the time that the F sound in faith, full, false, and filled, suggests the way the sea of faith used to be full, creating a sense of abundance. That is where your metaphor is found. And also your simile, comparing it to the way faith used to reach far around the world. Lines 24 to 25. But now I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar. Now the speaker only hears the sea's sad retreat, retreat, withdrawing roar. The sea coming in, the sea going out. Lines 26 to 28. Retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. As the sea of faith becomes smaller, it disappears into the atmosphere and leaves the edges of the world naked. Stanza 4. 
Ah, love, let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams. So various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy nor love nor light. Not nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. There, once again, you will see alliteration of the L. And actually, I see there's another simile. And we are here as on a darkling plain, com um, comparing us to be there as the night is appearing. The speaker addresses the companion as love and states desperately that the two of them need to treat each other with honesty, be true, and authenticity. In other words, our oh, love, let us be true. Let us be honest. Lines 30 to 33. To one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams. There we also have a simile. So various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy nor love nor light. <coughs> Sorry. The world, although it has a dream-like quality of variety, beauty, and newness, doesn't actually offer joy, love, or clarity, light, clarity. This is emphasized by the alliteration of the L, which plays on the double meaning of the word, word lie, to lie before us. There's a double meaning before I carry on with the notes. You can lie down. In other words, this lies before us. But this lie is actually, it's so beautiful, but there's no, neither joy nor love nor light. So beautiful. So actually, there's also a lie in telling a fib. Neither can it provide certainty, peace, or relief from pain. Line 34. Line 35 to 36, the speaker compares the collective situation to standing on a flat and dark piece of land, which is caught up in the chaos of fighting. Here battles between unknowing groups continue under the cover of darkness. The form of the poem. Dover Beach has an unusual form. The poem is highly irregular and does not fit in any specific poetic form, and as such is considered free verse. You would also have noticed that the stanza lengths are not the same. The poem consists of four stanzas, each of different length. Stanza one has 14 lines. Stanza two has six lines. Stanza three to eight, uh, stanza three, sorry, has eight lines. Stanza four has nine lines. The use of stanza breaks follows the most significant developments in the speaker's mental journey, with each stanza focusing on a coherent set of thoughts. Stanza one deals with the speaker's initial experience on the beach. Oh, there's a spelling error, sorry about that. Which shifts from calmness to disquiet brought on by the sound of the moving pebbles. Stanza two introduces Sophocles as the speaker imagines ancient Greece and believes that the tragic playwright must have experienced the same sort of pain and doubt that the speaker is experiencing now. Stanza three develops the specific reason why the speaker hears such sadness in the sound of the sea, the loss of faith. And stanza four finally tries 
without entirely succeeding to build a defense against the future faithless world by professing the value of authentic love. <clears throat> then I promised you last week that we will start with Amadeus. But I haven't started with the reading of Amadeus because I am hoping that after this session, you will all go and read Act 1. The play in a nutshell. What is this, po is this play about? As an old man, Ant Antonio Salieri calls on the audience. You will find when he talk, calls on the audience, the coat, the, um, they are the ghosts of the future in the, in the play. To witness his confession about his rivalry with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and his determination to destroy this brilliant composer. By means of flashbacks, Salieri takes us back to scenes in the last 10 years of Mozart's life from the time he met the 25-year-old at the court of the Emperor Joseph II in Vienna until Mozart's death. Salieri's jealousy of Mozart's music, which he describes as the voice of God, becomes an obsession to him. His attempts to block Mozart's career are so successful that Mozart dies penniless. Not even that can soften Salieri's heart. And 32 years later, he confesses to the ghosts of the future, not because he wants forgiveness, but because he wants to gain himself lasting infamy as Mozart's killer. This is because he never became so fo as famous with his music as my Mozart had. The characters, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He was born in 1756 and died in 1791. He was born in Salzburg, Austria. He is considered one of the most brilliant and versatile composers that ever lived. At the age of six, he was composing his first pieces, touring Europe and playing a variety of in instruments. In other words, he was a child prodigy. After moving to Vienna, Mozart married Constance Weber in 1782, a match his father did not approve of. Like many geniuses in their field, Mozart had his own ideas and was a bit of a rebel. His prodigious talent brought him into conflict with rival musicians who did not understand his genius and his independent attitude caused conflict with musicians at the emperor's court, particularly with Antonio Salieri. Emmanuel Schikaneder, the owner of a popular theatre company and a Freemason, believed in Mozart's music and commissioned the Magic Flute, which ran for over 200 performances. This was not enough to save Mozart from poverty and illness, however. He died a pauper at the age of 35 and was buried in an unmarked grave. What does it mean he died as a pauper? A pauper is somebody who is extremely poor. The cause of his death is most commonly thought to be rheumatic fever, also known as military fever in those days. Antonia Salieri, 1750 to 1825. Salieri was the fifth son of an Italian merchant. He learned the violin and harpsichord from an early age. When he was orphaned 
at the age of 15, he went to Venice and Vienna, where he completed his musical education. In 1774, Salieri was appointed to the Empress Court in Vienna, where he became Kapellmeister in 1788. He served the Viennese court with great success for 50 years and was highly respected as a teacher of music. Beethoven, Schubert, Liszt were his pupils. He was also known for his concern for and generous donations towards the social welfare of musicians. Um, at this point, I would like you to refer to the characters in your text. I'm not sure if everybody has received the same text as that I have, but in my version of the play, it can be found on page eight. At this point, I can also mention to you that there is a film. I think it was ran about three years ago. I'm not 100% sure, maybe even longer ago. Um, there's a film on Amadeus. I always tell my students they can watch the films, but to remember that books vary. But in the case of Amadeus, if you watch the film together in um, conjunction with your text, you will find as it is a play that is, it is virtually word for word the same as the film. So in this case, it is quite valuable to watch the film. And the music is out of this world. Before reading any character analysis, it is a good idea to let the play speak for itself and form your own ideas as you see the characters in action. I would also um, advise you, as you pick up analysis of characters, is to build your own character um, summaries. Start character summaries in hard copy in a book or on your computer in a file and add the character um, traits as you go along. What is opera? Italy was the birthplace of many musical forms, including opera, and the Italian influence was still strong in Germany and Austria in Mozart's time. However, French and German styles, which were more influential. Gluck, Salieri's tutor and mentor, was in fact a German composer who introduced innovations into opera styles. Operatic forms and terms occur throughout the play, and you will find explanations of these in the lessons. Freemasons. Freemasons are mentioned in this play. In the play, von Swieten is a Freemason, and he invites both Salieri and Mozart to join his lodge. The Freemasons organization dates to medieval times when masons, stonecutters, formed themselves into guilds, just as other craftsmen did. In other words, they were all stonecutters. By the 17th century, the Freemasons Guild admitted men of wealth and social status and became a society which promoted fraternity, equality and peace. Their societies were known as Masonic Lodges, and the members of the Lodge would, and still do, meet socially and do charitable work. 
they are a secret sorry a secret society perhaps because when they were a guild of craftsmen they wanted to keep the secrets of their trade and the secrecy has been maintained in this to this day because of their secret rituals and the fact that they believe in religious tolerance there has been some opposition to them from various churches the themes in amadeus what is a theme a theme is an underlying message conveyed throughout a piece of writing the play was not only written to entertain audiences the dramatist has some ideas he wanted to explore and to bring to our attention so we could think about them too there are several themes in amadeus readers or audiences may not always spot the same themes a major theme is likely to be noticed by everyone whereas less significant themes may be less obvious some themes are more dominant than others and are often the topics of literary essays the major themes are listed below i'm listing them for you so that when you study amadeus when you are reading the, the acts and you are studying them in conjunction with your study guide you can take note of these themes and as I have suggested you do with the um, characters as you read and you note, take note of themes, make note of the themes and start a section on the various themes. This will definitely help you in writing literary essays. Some of the major themes, hypocrisy, jealousy, envy, genius, versus mediocrity in other words innovation versus convention justice versus injustice or betrayal father-son relationships salieri's relationship with god or mozart's relationship with his father salieri's search for god goodness or virtue versus sin, his Faustian pact, appearance versus reality, absolute beauty, absolute music or absoluteness. If you have any questions, you can um, place them in the box below. And if you have not been able to do this before the session closes down, you can send us these questions to academics at impoc.co.za. Um, I just want to remind you that you can download this presentation from the box on the right, or you can find it on our website. If you are not registered with Impoc and would like to do so, contact us at info at impoc thank you for attending this webinar i hope you found um, it uh, informative and that it will help you with your studies till next time goodbye